Hello everyone and welcome to the last lesson of this course. In this lesson, we're going to make a colour concept art of our design. This concept art will help the 3D artist to apply the materials and textures that we want to include. The main difference between a concept art and an illustration is that a concept art presents a proposal that works as a guide or reference for a project, object or character for a film or video game, whereas an illustration is a finished piece of artwork. To begin, create a new layer with a neutral grey background. This way we'll be able to distinguish all the areas of light and shading. We're going to do a series of colour designs and we'll create another layer where we'll do the first one. Select a solid brush and paint quickly with the tones you want. Change them if you need to by pressing Ctrl U. This opens the window where you can adjust the hue and saturation of the area you painted. Create new layers and paint designs in different colours. Do as many as you like or as many as you feel inspired to. Look for references if you're unsure about the colours you want. If you look at illustrations, you can find beautiful colour ranges to inspire you. You can even search for colours in your favourite video games or movies. Observe how the colours are painted, how they're lit, the colour palettes used, and adapt these to your needs. Use saturated tones and flat colours. As we're not painting an illustration, we're selecting a colour range. We'll do the same for our concept art, although we can mix the colours a little bit more. When all your designs are painted, choose the one you like the most and copy it as a reference in a corner of your artboard. Remember to name each layer you work on so you know what you're doing. Save the designs of previous colours in a group so they're not in your way. Adjust the background colour so it flows with the colour we've chosen. To begin, let's add some atmosphere to our background as we don't want it to be too flat. Use a soft brush to add light and shade. We should use the soft brush throughout the whole process as this allows us to shape more precisely. When the background is done, apply a base colour to your book using a clipping mask. We'll work on one layer and if we create new ones, we'll merge them later. Because of this, we'll have to lock the pixels on our mask when we've finished. Use the colours you chose earlier to separate the elements of the book. Don't use the exact same tones you painted. Adjust the hues so they're more evenly spread and harmonious. Our example is just a colour guide. If you don't know how to blend the tones, you can create a saturation layer, select Colorize and blend in the colour range that you like. However, the tones are more exact if we're able to select them directly. If you create a saturation layer, Combine your layers to continue working on one. Now we're going to apply some light and shading with a soft brush on a low opacity. Like this, we'll obtain lights and shadows that look like a soft colour gradient. To do this, create a new layer in multiply mode for the shading and soft or highlight for the light. I recommend you use soft light for the first lights. 
If you need more abrupt shadows, use a painterly style brush, but lower the opacity. Probably the cast shadows are the ones you'll need this type of brush for. You could also define the shadows using the selection tool or the pen tool. When applying any kind of light or shadow, bear in mind you need to establish a light source. Decide where the light is coming from and where it hits your object. Once you've decided on the light source, you can't change, otherwise your design will be inconsistent. It's useful to make a note of the position and direction of the light in case you were to forget. The most intense light will appear in the area that first comes into contact with the light source and vice versa. When you're done, merge your layers into one. If you don't want to lose the layers you created so you can return to them in the future, press Ctrl, Caps Lock and E at the same time. This allows you to make a new layer with all the layers you have visible. I'm going to do a few tests with different tools and decide what I'll use to paint. So I'm going to use the mixer and the smudge tool. Finally, I prefer the soft brush using the brush tools as I have more control over what I'm doing. I'll use the line of the pencil tool to shape our object. I'll use the eyedropper to select the tones for the light and shading. Our brush should have a very low opacity so the tones blend together and give us nice, realistic looks. You can use other brushes besides the soft brush, but the advantage of this one is that the edges are blurred and this allows us to blend the colours effectively. This effect looks great if you're patient and dedicated. You should constantly make decisions as you go along, painting, erasing, repainting. You'll realise that there are things that don't work and you need to redo. Return again and again to different areas and make sure they're all working well together. Most of the time you'll see that you advanced in some areas more than others, or that you applied more contrast to some volumes than others you need to even out every area to achieve quality work. The same as with the shading, there will be areas you might want to look more painterly. For this, combine different brushes with the soft one to get these effects. Remember though, this is a realistic concept for a 3D modelling artist, so don't allow yourself too much artistic licence or your design might not be understood. I'm going to share a tip with you to paint lights quickly and effectively. Can you see these marks that I've painted on the cover of the book? I want them to be cracks that emit some light. So select the colour you want to use for the light. Choose one that's saturated and luminous. Then paint a white line in the middle of the saturated colour with the soft brush. This effect is lovely and it works really well for small areas of light. In larger areas you'd have to shape the tones really well. As we did earlier, you'd use the eyedropper to create your range of colour and hues. Choosing the tones directly could work if you have a good eye and you want to apply some specific highlights, but I think the eyedropper is a safer option.
For areas that have very shiny textures, we could use a solid white. This effect is really nice and it looks professional if you apply it properly to specific areas. However, we shouldn't use it lightly as our object could lose contrast. Only use this for the more intense lights. When we want to define the textures of our object, we can use some textured brushes. You can find really interesting ones online, or you can make them yourself using images or photos of textures. Another way to add texture to your object is to find a photo of a texture you like and place it on top of your drawing on a layer with the blending mode set to overlay. This is a good resource when you're unsure of how to represent the texture on your object. So our object looks like it's resting on a surface, we need to paint in a cast shadow. To do this, select a brush that you like and create a new layer underneath your book in multiply mode and paint the shadow depending on where your light source is. Soften the edges with the eraser. Lower the opacity of the shadow if necessary. I'm going to try to apply a purple light around our cracks of light. I'll select a soft brush and the same saturated tone we used for the light. The brush could be in light mode or highlight. As this is only a test, create a new layer so you can delete it if you don't like it. Finally, I've decided not to use this, so I'll discard this layer. Keep applying constant contrast to the light and shading, intensifying the areas that you think work. Don't forget to merge the layers as you go along. This makes it easier for you. When you're advanced enough and your volumes make more sense, you can create a saturation layer to adjust the hues in your design, making some more saturated or changing others. You could also create a layer and adjust the levels. Merge the layers again when you finish. Keep focusing on the lights and the shading with brushes in multiply or light mode. Remember that even if you paint areas of very dark shadow, there should be nothing left unexplained for our 3D artist, so readjust constantly. To increase the sense of volume, Apply a soft light to the areas or edges that stick out of each element. This is also a very effective resource, just don't overdo it with the intensity of the light. Again, define the edges and the volumes that might have gotten lost in the process. We've lost the lighting on the cover, for example. To correct this, paint on top using the same resource I explained earlier. Select the light saturated tone and apply a white in the middle. That way the light stands out once again. 
Apply the final touches and lighting to your drawing using the techniques you've learnt so far. If you need to repaint some textures you lost in the process of applying new light and shading, just repaint with a painterly style brush. As I explained earlier, you can find great references online or you can even take your own photos to create different textures. Another way to obtain textures is to mix existing brushes and generate new combinations of brush properties. If you prefer, you can paint the textures yourself with the soft brush, looking for realistic references or basing yourself on illustrations of other artists and copying the solutions they applied to their designs. Personally, I constantly reference other artists to learn how to apply all kinds of resources. It's interesting how we can find mistakes in our design when we look at other artists' content and compare. I also recommend that if you're tired of your design and you don't know how to continue, ask another artist's opinion. You might be surprised by their suggestions and it might help to give a fresh touch to the design. The textures need to be really well defined as our 3D artist needs to know what the object is made of. Otherwise they could apply leather to metallic areas or something even worse. To finish our design I'm going to try to apply a smoky atmosphere surrounding the object. For this select a few different brushes with smoke effects and lower the opacity. Adjust the brush properties if necessary. I like to change the angle of the brush so I get random strokes. Mix more colours to get a richer result. This resource could work very well for an illustration. But for a presentation of a prop, we don't really need it. It actually makes our object blend in with the background and lose definition. But remember it for when you are doing an illustration and you need to add some atmosphere. To finish, we'll add some richness to the background. Try out different textured brushes and with a low opacity, apply loose but logical strokes. Use the eraser to get rid of the areas that are too exposed. So after a long but worthwhile process, our concept art is finished. With all the techniques you've learnt throughout this process, you can start to design your own props for scenes in a video game. I really hope you enjoyed the course and I hope to see you again next time. Bye!